Retinoblastoma is an embryonal tumour, and as such, most cases occur in very young children and babies. Retinoblastoma is one of only a very small number of childhood cancers that's caused by a genetic defect inherited from parents. Retinoblastoma can be either in one eye, which is called unilateral disease, this makes up about two thirds of cases, or in both eyes, which is called bilateral disease. All children with bilateral tumours have the heritable disease, whereas fewer of the unilateral cases have this heritable form. The heritable form of retinoblastoma is now well understood. It occurs as a result of two alterations called mutations in the retinoblastoma suppressor gene, or RB1. The abnormal gene can be passed from a parent to their child, allowing the tumour to develop. Or this alteration can occur spontaneously while the baby is developing in the uterus. Children with a heritable form have an increased risk of developing other types of cancer later in life. Genetic counselling and support is available for families in which a member has retinoblastoma. Not all children of an affected parent will inherit the faulty gene, but all children born into families with a history of retinoblastoma will be screened regularly during their first five years of life for signs so that treatment can be started early if a tumour does develop. The causes of the non-heritable form of retinoblastoma are not fully understood. Many of the heritable cases of retinoblastoma will be picked up by screening before any symptoms have been detected. Where there's no family history, the first sign of retinoblastoma is often a white pupil that does not reflect the light. This is called leukocoria and is sometimes detected in photographs taken using flash photography. The affected eye may look white in the photograph due to the loss of the red reflex. Some children may have a squint. If the tumour is large, a painful red eye. In older children, retinoblastoma can be picked up as a result of deteriorating vision. Diagnosis will be confirmed by an examination under anaesthetic. Unlike most other types of cancer, retinoblastomas can be diagnosed just by their appearance. A biopsy isn't necessary. Once retinoblastoma is diagnosed, other tests may be carried out to check the exact position and size of the tumour and whether it's spread. This is known as staging. These tests may include an ultrasound scan, an MRI scan, and a lumbar puncture. A bone marrow sample may be taken to check whether there's been any spread of the cancer to the bone marrow, and a blood sample will be taken for genetic testing. Retinoblastoma can be divided into five further subgroups called A to E. Depending on the size, position, and amount of damage to the eye. This helps doctors decide which treatment is best. Extraocular retinoblastoma is exceedingly rare in the UK, but means that the tumour has spread beyond the eye and into the tissues surrounding it or to other parts of the body. Retinoblastoma treatment depends on a number of factors, including the staging of the tumours. The main aim of treatment, however, is to eradicate the cancer. It may be possible to treat small tumours with laser or freezing treatment called cryotherapy. These procedures are carried out under anaesthetic. Larger tumours are normally shrunk with chemotherapy either given intravenously or in some cases by injection into the blood vessel supplying the eye. This is called intra-arterial chemotherapy. Other treatments such as direct injection of chemotherapy into the eye and radiotherapy 
can be used for more complex cases. Large tumours, especially in unilateral cases, are often treated with surgery to remove the eye, called enucleation, especially if the sight is already lost and there's no realistic chance of visual recovery. A combination of treatments, however, is often necessary. The risk of side effects will depend on the particular treatment being used. Sometimes these can occur years later, called late effects. The child's doctor will discuss all of these risks before treatment starts. The major impact on your child, however, is vision and the team treating them will endeavour to preserve as much useful vision as possible. Support for visually impaired children will be available, including special provisions for schooling. A number of children may develop persistent side effects as a result of treatment, sometimes many years later, so-called late effects. The most significant of these is the risk of second cancer, which is higher in the heritable form of retinoblastoma. Nearly all children with retinoblastoma are cured. If the tumour comes back after the initial treatment, it's called a relapse. Further treatment with chemotherapy, local treatments, or enucleation may be required, often a combination of these. It's highly likely a child with recurrent tumour will be cured. The risk of the tumour spreading outside of the eye fortunately remains small.